Okay, well here we are at another section of Ross Creek. This time we've come upstream about three or four kilometres and we see another change in form. So our previous location was where we had the incised concrete lined channel with the artificial floodplain either side and then up to what would have been Malaluka wetland, but those Malalukas had been removed and we just had the large eucalypts left there to give the impression of a, a eucalypt grassland type environment. Here, of course, we have a slightly different setting, but nonetheless, it's been heavily modified. Once again, with that focus being to actually get water through the catchment out of the urban landscape quickly and efficiently, causing minimal disruption to properties either side of the channel, particularly during high flow events when naturally you may well get um, overbank flow um, causing inundation and potential flooding. So here, of course, what they've done, they've widened the channel. They've put a liner in the middle of the channel here still, uh, not as significant as the previous site, but nonetheless, it's seeking to serve the same purpose, and that is to actually limit the prospect of the channel incising and eroding into the landscape here, and then creating significant problem downstream with the deposition of sediment and so forth um, due to those processes. So we've had lining of the channel, but we also see here some other features. And behind me, we have this concrete drop structure with a concrete apron on the downstream side of that. So what this seeks to do is actually reduce the velocity of flow in the stream. So the engineers have come here and said, okay, well, how can we minimize the risk of the channel causing problems through eroding into its former bed? So as I mentioned before, they've lined the base of the channel with this concrete liner, but they've also sought to reduce the velocity of the water. And they've done that by taking the, reducing the gradient of the stream. Now to do that, what they've done is they've probably infilled part of the channel in its lower reaches here, reduced the gradient, and then they're dropping water over these control structures here is where there's a significant change in channel height. So they're controlling the reduction in height as you move down the channel by doing it in a fashion here where the water spills over the top, impacts this concrete apron here, loses its energy, and then flows down here in a, at a lower velocity and at a velocity that's not likely to cause problems in terms of erosion and incision of the channel. So the whole purpose of this is to reduce the velocity of the water during high flow events. Now some of the other creative ways that you might be able to do that is first of all reduce the amount of water actually reporting to the stream. And in our discussion earlier we spoke about the fact that much of the catchment has been modified and in particular it's had an introduction of impermeable surfaces into the urban landscape. So we have asphalt roads, we have tin roofs, tiled roofs, we have sports fields and so forth where we end up with water reporting to the channel very quickly during high rain intensity rainfall events. And that means that the channel has to be large to accommodate that water when it reports here quickly and moves out through the catchment to Raby Bay, causing minimal disruption to the surrounding neighborhood. Now, we can actually help that process by reducing the amount of water that reports here so quickly. And one of the ways to do that is to actually retain water on our properties, for example, water storage in terms of our large water tanks where we can store rainwater and then use it to water our garden, you know, perhaps have it plumbed back into our homes to actually be used for flushing of toilets, washing, those sorts of things. So that reduces the amount of water reporting here during those events and keeps it on site. We can put in small um, retention dams and lakes in our urban environment. And this is a focus of particularly new subdivisions whereby water is often a selling point or a focus of the subdivision. So you'll see ponds introduced with um, uh, rock walls around them, plantings and so forth, which contain water and hold it there and then let it move down channel over a longer period of time than it normally would. We can also seek to retain natural vegetation in our catchment. So in those environments, we have surfaces which are more permeable and allow rainfall to actually infiltrate into the catchment and then drain out 
over a longer extended period of time. And what we're seeking to do here is actually remove that flashiness from the hydrograph. Another mechanism here which we could do to perhaps improve the aesthetic value of this area would be to perhaps run culverts or pipe water down the side of the channel here under the earth in the banks here where at certain flow levels or stage heights water drained out of the actual channel here through filters into those pipes and then moved down out of sight through these pipes to the mouth of the creek where it could discharge more safely without causing harm. Other ways to slow water down in a catchment rather than this very um, hard approach which is reminiscent of engineering approaches to these sorts of issues in the 60s and 70s would be to actually make the channel bed rougher so we could introduce uh, perhaps some um, vegetation, reeds and alike which would slow the water down and once again taking the energy out of it so it didn't erode into the channel. We could introduce maybe some small weirs made out of rocks and so forth but they are, tend to be not very natural okay to this part of the world where I grew up yes that's a natural characteristic of our channels but not here so we're seeking to take the energy out of the water we can take those approaches or we can stop the same volume of water reporting to the channel here when we have those high intensity rainfall events okay when we think about slowing the velocity of the water down in the channel also we can introduce meanders and, and the meandering characteristic is, is common to many of the river systems within the Australian landscape. Remember we're in a landscape which is very old, it has low gradients typically outside of its higher elevation regions and across our coastal plains we don't see straight channels like this. Most of our channels have this meandering characteristic to it and that's, that's a natural characteristic or attribute of our coastal plain and even our inland river systems in many instances. However, in those environments, the water doesn't move quickly through the landscape. And that takes us back to what we see here now. The engineers have taken that meandering characteristic out of a stream like this and put in the straight channel to actually allow water to move through here much more quickly during those high discharge events.